George Kittle had an electric performance against Dallas. I want to talk about it, what he did so well, just what he does so well in general. So uh, let's just get into it. Let's start off with this play and what's going to happen here. This is a classic example of what Kittle does so well. A couple of these plays uh, I did talk about in, when I made my review of the whole game itself, because how could I not? When talking about uh, that game, Kittle was all over the place. But this is one of the plays I talked about then, but I really want to get into it in a bit more detail here, because I think it's worth mentioning that, you know, uh, for Kittle, just the way that his blocking sets up the pass. You see a situation like this, and as a defense, you have to be fully ready for him to block, not just because he is a tight end who can block, but he can block like an offensive lineman. His blocking is elite, and because of that, you're often not ready for him to be running routes when he is running routes. On this play, he is going to be running a deep route, and the significance of that is that there's just going to be a corner who is covering him on this play. It's a one-on-one -on -one matchup deep down the field, which oftentimes, the way you try to win these is with sending an elite wide receiver down the field, not a tight end, but again, it's different with Kittle, and it also helps that you see all the Dallas players and how far in they are, you know? Uh, for example, Diggs all the way on the bottom of the screen, you see him kind of past the 35-yard line at like the 36-yard line, whereas over on the top of the screen, no one is past the 35-yard line. It doesn't seem like a big difference, but that little yard or two can definitely be all it takes sometimes. Watch as this play begins. They run a play action, and you see right here, so now Dallas realizes, okay, this is going to be a pass down the field, but this is where an issue can arise for Dallas, right? He got, you can tell the corner covering him is a little bit fooled on this. He got a little bit shocked by what is actually happening right here, but that's fine. You know, uh, use your speed to your advantage. Definitely try to uh, make sure you get open. But Kittle is going to do something that I really like. The small subtleties to his route running can really be what allows him to, uh, you know, not just be a good receiving tight end, but be an elite one. And it's what he's going to do here where you see uh, it's a, again, uh, you see him kind of, Faking as though he's going up towards the top of the screen a little bit. That's kind of where he's running, right? He's angled almost directly for the 40-yard, uh, uh, where it says 40 there. That's almost exactly where he's going. Watch him go there, but then cuts in just enough, making it a little bit of a window for Purdy to hit him. And that's impressive for two things. For one, he knew to do that. He knew to make the subtleties. But it also goes to show the chemistry that him and Purdy have, because Purdy obviously has not been there for too long. But despite that... Kittle and Purdy kind of know each other well enough to know that that's how Kittle is going to run the route. He doesn't have to run the route that way. He could just run straight downfield. He chose to run it this way to allow himself to get a little bit more open, which was all Purdy needed to make the throw. So good stuff from Purdy, but good stuff from Kittle. This play was obviously the highlight of all highlights for Kittle in this game. This was the star play, but I want to talk about, again, exactly how it happened. Got to talk about the whole play uh, itself first. So, it's going to start off, this is the concept you see on the screen. There's going to be a play action. Purdy is going to roll out towards the bottom of the screen. You have two receivers running deep routes in that direction. Oftentimes, something can get open, but spoiler alert on this play, that's not going to work out. However, obviously, we're talking about Kittle here. That's what Kittle is doing. Kittle is just helping block here, helping make sure that Purdy has enough time to do this rollout, and then after you get done blocking, turn around, maybe you'll get open. That's kind of, that's his job on this play, but honestly, the blocking part is typically the important part of this play. Look at how Purdy is going to really help. I mean, he, I mean, he completely clears out that area. It was a bit of a, almost a triple team there, so again, a bit of an advantage, but still does a tremendous job in the blocking game, and at this point, he's successfully done his play. You know, if, if you're one of those graders, you say plus one, or however you grade it, uh, you know, you're saying good play by Kittle because he did his job but now Kittle looks around and says hey there's not really anyone in my area he puts his hand up saying you can hit me if you want to we can probably gain some yards uh so you know already tremendous stuff from Kittle before the most impressive part even happens Purdy's throw here is going to be a bit too far but Kittle is able to somehow concentrate and make that catch get the big explosive play just an electric play by Kittle and again being able to do the catching stuff that's obviously the impressive part that's what gets the headlines as it should it's very impressive but it goes to show that if you can block as a tight end and receive well that's how you can be one of these elite tight ends you know typically the elite tight ends they have to be good at both Kelsey's kind of the exception as he's not really elite at blocking but he's so good at receiving it doesn't matter but all these other elite tight ends that we've seen in the modern era you know like you think Mark Andrews Rob Gronkowski George Kittle, they're all guys who are, you know, 
great at both. And it's also just more simple stuff, stuff like this, where again, I mean, worth mentioning, he could be blocking here as well, but this is a defensive back who's going to be covering him one-on-one -on -one in this spot. So you're getting the extra attention, right? You're not getting to go up against linebackers. Really, no one's going to put a linebacker against you. You're getting defensive back matchups. But it's worth mentioning, I think, just how much San Francisco trusts Kittle with what route they're having him run here. It's a route that's going to go over the middle like in this man coverage scenario where there's going to be no one over the middle. This is a good angle to make this throw. A lot of times you don't have your tight end be the guy who's doing this. A lot of times it's your receiver, right? It's Brandon Ayuk or Debo Samuel. Worth mentioning, Samuel's also running kind of a similar route. But still, uh, you know, Kittle is the guy that Purdy trusts in this spot to win. So there's several ways you can try and get the inside leverage, right? Uh, you know, you can use uh, physicality, you can try to fake them out, but Kittle's going to do the most simple one. Watch him just run and just run to the inside. Again, this is just knowing the situation where if this was a, you know, if there was a player over in the middle, maybe doing this wouldn't exactly work because a little bit of separation wouldn't be enough. But in this spot, you know that Purdy is going to have a good angle and you can continue to run over the middle as much as possible once you get the inside leverage immediately. So this is absolutely the correct thing to do in this situation of just get to your spot. You don't have to be too creative. Get to your spot. Purdy makes this throw. Kittle makes the grab. They are able to pick up, again, another chunk play. So, I mean, this is just the reality of Kittle is, I mean, as of right now, he's playing just like a fantastic wide receiver. It is not the, uh, you know, he, he's not just being a tight end or a receiving tight end. He's not getting schemed open by Kyle Shanahan really at all on these plays. This is really just him winning, which is, again, Shanahan obviously helps him, but he doesn't need Kyle Shanahan to be great. He is just great. This plays another example of kind of what I just talked about, where it's going to be, again, I mean, you look at it, very similar situation, right? Almost the exact same play, but he's going to go about it in a different way. There's several ways you can win in these, this spot, right? Well, he's going to win in a different way. Look at how one this play begins. You see it right here. Look at how far up to the top of the screen Kittle ran. And what that's doing is it's getting the player who's covering him also up in that direction. So again, you don't have to do that. You can just run to your spot. But what also what running to your spot does, and you know, talk about how in football everything can help set up other things of, you know, now it, you're kind of selling as though, oh no, you just run what you typically are going to do. You go to your spot typically, and so then guys start to follow you to your spot, but now you're doing something a bit more clever. Watch this cut and how well he cuts. I mean, what a move to be able to make the catch, pick up the first down on a first down. Really good stuff from Kittle. And the reality is, does San Francisco win that football game without Kittle? I don't know, but they're certainly glad that they had him as he was a dominant force in this one. And that's just kind of what Kittle brings to the football team is, again, going up against Philadelphia next week. Who knows what will happen there unless you're watching this video after the fact, then you know who, what, what happens there. But you have to think that, you know, his ability to win in these one-on-one -on -one matchups on the inside and on the outside is a factor, not just in those games, but in every game. And obviously not just in the games where he constantly gets the ball as well, right? The threat of George Kittle is always going to be something that uh, definitely helps. You know, teams start to double uh, George Kittle. Well, what happens when you double him? Well, now other guys get open and you have so many other weapons. Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, uh, you know, obviously Christian McCaffrey at the running back position. There's so many different ways that this team can win. Uh, it, you know, it's very difficult to stop, especially when you have someone like George Kittle, who is just, you know, uh, a great threat in his own right. He is kind of a number one option at the tight end position. And it's not a coincidence that, uh, you know, uh, he's always a big force come postseason time as well as when you need a player to make a play he finds a way to do it at least that's what I think what do you guys think let me know in the comments below what are your thoughts on Kittle and his performance against Dallas always love hearing from y'all and of course as always thanks for watching